Lopez Gallego, and I welcome you to the advanced module of Mock Materials and Science for Immune Industrial Process. Today, I will start a series of three lectures about the basics of enzyme immobilization. The first lecture is an introductory lecture to the science of enzyme immobilization. The second lecture will be focused on the selection of the best material for enzyme immobilization, and the third one will be focused on the selection of the surface chemistry for enzyme immobilization. First, I would like to start asking you what an immobilized enzyme is. In simple words, we can say that an immobilized enzyme is just a mixture of a soluble enzyme with a solid material to make what we name heterogeneous biocatalysts. The biocatalysts are now heterogeneous because the enzyme is in a different phase from the reactants. While the reactants are in lipid phase, the enzyme is in solid phase. Therefore, we can easily separate the enzyme from the reactants once the reaction is complete. If we smartly design the immobilization process, we can select the material and the surface chemistry. So we can increase the protein stability, making the heterogeneous biocatalyst more stable. By doing so, we can harness the best properties of the biocatalysis, the selectivity and the enzyme capacity to work under, under my condition, but also we can harness the best properties of the heterogeneous catalysis, as now the biocatalyst can be reused and integrated into a variety of reactors, including flow reactors for continuous operation. So we can use different types of materials, but we have different types of immobil uh, of uh, MCN immobilization approaches. So the first approach uh, I would like to tell you is anchoring the enzymes uh, to, perf to perform calories. Um, a perform or pre-existing carriers is already here. So we incubate this carrier with the enzyme in order to uh, integrate the enzyme into the solid phase. As these are uh, pre-existing or preforming carriers, we can have porous particles, whole fibers, or porous membranes. The second type is enzyme aggregation or enzyme assembly, also called as carrier-free immobilization because the only material that forms the heterogeneous biocatalyst is the enzyme itself. In this type of immobilization, we can highlight cross-linked enzymes, aggregate or tears, enzyme organization in biotemplated materials using protein or DNA scaffolds, and organic frameworks such as metallic organic frameworks, covalent organic frameworks, or hydrogen organic frameworks. The third type of immobilization is the enzyme encapsulation, where the enzymes are physically retained into different materials. This is normally a self-assembly process where enzymes can be encapsulated either into liposomes or uh, liposomes are, are, are when the material is based on lipids or polymersomes where the material is based on synthetic polymers or proteinosomes where the material is based on proteins or peptides. Depending on how the enzyme is bound to the material, we can distinguish between reversible, irreversible, or supramolecular interactions between enzymes and the materials. Another important thing to consider is that an enzyme can be easier or more difficult to orient depending on the immobilization type. While the orientation of enzymes is performed, uh, is, uh, the, well, the orientation of enzymes is done on performing carriers, the control of the orientation is easier. However, the orientation of encapsulated enzymes is really challenging. Therefore, to immobilize uh, uh, any enzyme, we need to consider four fundamental aspects. One is the carrier features. 
The second is the surface chemistry that allows the interactions between the material and the enzyme. The third is the spatial organization of the enzyme across the surface of the material. And last but not least uh, is how the enzyme is oriented on the surface material. The functionality and the stability of the immobilized enzyme will depend on these four aspects. We have a variety to immobilize enzymes, but to learn more about how to choose the optimal material for enzyme immobilization, I encourage you to uh, see the next uh, 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 video of this model. The same happens with the immobilization chemistry. We have different type of surface chemistry to immobilize the enzyme, and to learn you to learn more about this topic, you can watch one of the next uh, video uh, within this uh, model. Once the best material and best surface chemistry have been chosen, you have to consider the length of the spatial arm that brings the enzymes and the carrier together, but also the type of bonds, uh, for example, if the bond is reversible or irreversible, or if the number of bonds that uh, they are established between the carrier and the uh, enzymes. Depending on these properties, you can modulate the activity and the stability of the immobilized enzyme. And this property depends on the fiber thickness of the material, the ball size of the material, the group density at the surface of the material, or the group density of certain amino acids at the surface of the, of the enzyme, and also if uh, polymer coatings are involved in the immobilization process. Finally, the enzyme distribution across the surface of the material also plays a role on the functionality of the heterogeneous biocatalyst. This is particularly important when using porous carriers. In this case, the enzyme spatial organization can be controlled by the immobilization case. So, how is it possible? This is possible because there is a competition between the immobilization and protein diffusion kinetics. If we um, uh, simplify uh, uh, the pores of our porous carriers as a cylinder, we see that if the mobilization is faster than the diffusion, the enzyme will be mainly located at the outer surface of the carrier. However, if the mobilization is slower than the enzyme diffusion, the enzyme will have enough time to diffuse through the pores, reaching reaching deeper surfaces without within the porous structures. The four enzymes immobilize uh, uh, through immobilization chemistry that promotes fast immobilization kinetics will be mainly located at the outer surface of the carriers, while enzymes immobilized through the immobilization chemistries that promote slow immobilization kinetics will be immobilized on inner regions of the carriers. This brings me to the end of this uh, lecture. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. And you can see more videos about the Amazon immobilization in, uh, uh, within the advanced modules of this mod. Thank you very much.